the Shura Council held its weekly session, presided over by its chairman, Ali Al Saleh. The session discussed and approved the consolidated final account of the state for the fiscal year ending in 2022, the performance report and the implementation of the state's general budget for the fiscal year 2022, and the statement of transfers from the account of other estimates to ministries and government agencies for the fiscal year 2022. The Council also discussed the proposed law on regulating the practice of the translation profession and referred it to the Legislative and Legal Affairs Committee. The Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh, congratulated the Speaker of the Federal National Council of the UAE, Saga Gubash, on the occasion of the election of Mohammed Al Yamahi as Speaker of the Arab Parliament. He affirmed that the election of Al Yamahi reflects the wide parliamentary confidence and high status of the UAE. The Minister of Industry and Commerce, Abdullah Fakhru, affirmed the Ministry's keenness to enhance the business environment and facilitate commercial procedures by adopting decisions and regulations that contribute to the economic system in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Regarding Decision 53 of 2024 on replacing the 4th Base and 5th Articles of Decision 40 of 2021 issued by the Deputy Prime Minister, regarding the definition of commercial activities, the Minister emphasised that this decision enhanced the protection of Bahraini merchant by limiting foreign ownership in retail activity to large companies with a high economic return. In this regard, the Minister issued Ministerial Decision 62 and 63 of 2024 to provide a flexible business environment that contributes to encouraging more commercial projects. He said that the amendments made by the two Ministerial Decisions constitute an important step aimed at improving the commercial system in the Kingdom and facilitating procedures to enhance business flexibility and contribute to creating an attractive and integrated investment environment. And to speak more about this, we are joined by the Assistant Under Secretary for the Commercial Registry and Companies at the Ministry of Industry and Commerce, Faisal Ahmed Saleh, in the following statement. The primary goal of Resolution Number 62 and 63 is to improve uh, commercial registration procedures and facilitate the renewal of CRs, supporting businesses who have faced difficulties in renewing their CRs on time and enabling them to re-enter the market more quickly and effectively. Among the amendments included in Resolution 62 is the acceptance of renewal requests for registration that have not received approvals and licenses from relevant authorities promptly especially for activities like factories, hospitals, and schools, mainly activities that require time to get the appropriate and relevant approvals and licenses from different authorities. Now, this gives investors sufficient time to complete the licensing process more smoothly. An additional amendment is the removal of the specified period of, for renewing CRs due to non-renewal, cancelled CRs due to non-renewal, allowing the reactivation upon request by the CR holder, enabling investors to return to the market. Resolution number 63 allows CR holders to renew their cancelled commercial registrations due to non-renewal, provided they pay the specified penalties. Similar to what was practiced before, the first year has a 10 BD penalty per month, the second year has a 20 BD penalty per month, and the third year has a 30 BD penalty per month. An additional penalty of 500 BD for each year after the third year, so starting from the fourth year, has been added, where the, the fines and penalties are calculated only if the CR holder wishes to reactivate their CR. And these penalties have been capped at a maximum of 5,000 BD. This facilitates the reactivation of suspended CRs, preventing their permanent loss, and offers CR holders a new opportunity to renew their CR even after three years of non-renewal.
in the presence of the Director General of the Institute of Public Administration, Dr. Sheikh Rana bint Isa bin Doaj al Khalifa. The closing ceremony of the first edition of the Interlaka programme was held, which targets the children of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, the RHF. On this occasion, the Secretary General of the RHF, Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa bin Mohammed al Khalifa, emphasised the importance of launching quality initiatives that embrace young people in the Kingdom of Bahrain in order to develop their distinctive energies and capabilities. The programme is part of a series of programmes that embody the government's vision to empower youth and prepare them for the future as the main pillar of progress, development and sustainability. The second day of the ISF School Games Bahrain 2024 witnessed an exciting competitive atmosphere as participating teams competed in multiple sports, including handball, volleyball, swimming, fencing and badminton. The Bahraini teams stood out in this tournament, while the teams of the participating countries recorded a variety of results in different games, reflecting the diversity of levels and performance among the teams. In swimming, the teams of Taipei, Hungary, Hong Kong and Turkey showed remarkable ex excellence. In fencing, China won gold in the boys singles category. In badminton, the Chinese team dominated the competition, winning the mixed team gold. The event continues to record remarkable achievements at the global level.
The Gymnasiad, which is being held in the Kingdom of Bahrain, for the first time has received great media attention, regionally and internationally, due to its outstanding organisation. More in this report. The Gymnasiad, which is being held in the Kingdom of Bahrain with the participation of more than 80 federations from more than 70 countries, witnessed great media attention, with the beginning of competitions between more than 5,500 participants in 26 sports. The High Organizing Committee of the Gymnasiad demonstrated their readiness to receive this large number of players and accompanying delegations, with great interest from the various media institutions in Bahrain and the international interest by the International School Sports Federation. Various media outlets showed great interest in circulating the news of the Gymnasiad through audiovisual and print media platforms, in addition to the great interaction through social media platforms, which included academic and scientific events that integrated sports science with field practice, as well as the tourist tours for participating delegations to various Bahraini landmarks. The success of the media coverage of this edition of the Gymnasiad confirmed the great success achieved by Bahrain in organizing this edition through the concerted efforts of various ministries and competent national institutions. The Arab Parliament approved the proposal of the Bahraini Representatives Council on supporting Bahrain's initiative adopted by the last Arab summit meeting to support the Palestinian cause. The proposal pointed out that Bahrain affirms its historical position in supporting Palestinians' rights and promoting all efforts to achieve a just, comprehensive and lasting peace in the region. Bahrain called on the Arab Parliament to declare its support and adoption of this important initiative in order to activate the role of Arab parliamentary diplomacy. The permanent representative of Bahrain to the United Nations in New York, Ambassador Jamal Arwehi, delivered Bahrain's speech at the UN Security Council's open debate on women, peace and security. The ambassador emphasised the importance of renewing the joint commitment and implementing the Women, Peace and Security Agenda to promote the respect of international law. He emphasised that Bahrain, represented by the Supreme Council for Women, headed by Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King, strengthened its leadership in recognising women's performance nationally and internationally and the achievement and representation of awards, initiatives and plans that support women's progress and contributions, including the launch of the Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa Global Award for Women's Empowerment, in cooperation with UN Women. Following the directors of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, the Prime Minister's office announced it will be receiving submissions for the sixth edition of the Government's Innovation Competition at FICRA from the 27th of October until the 27th of November 2024. 
FICRA aims to support innovation and excellence by providing opportunities for government sector employees and enterprises to present competitive proposals to develop government work streams in line with the Kingdom's comprehensive development led by His Majesty the King. The competition also aims to enhance creativity among the Kingdom's national workforce by implementing the wide-ranging ideas to further the Kingdom's development. The launch of the sixth edition of the competition affirms the success of the previous winning ideas of FICRA in enhancing government work streams and promising a culture of creativity and innovation. The Nationality, Passports and Residence Affairs NPRA, in cooperation with the Labour Market Regulatory Authority, the LMRA, carried out an inspection campaign in the Capital Governorate to ensure workers' compliance with Bahrain's residency laws and conditions. In this regard, the NPRA pointed out that the campaign aims to address residency violations, in addition to spread awareness on the importance of adhering to the laws and regulations related to this matter, stressing the continuity of inspection campaigns in cooperation and coordination with the relevant authorities. It noted the role of community members in supporting the efforts of government agencies to address residency violations in the Kingdom and reporting any complaints related to regular labour violations by contacting the MPRA's call centre. The Labour Fund at Tamkeen confirmed its ongoing regulatory efforts through inspection campaigns targeting institutions benefiting from wage support programmes aimed at ensuring compliance and detecting any violations. Since the launch of the updated programme package, more than 4,300 inspections have been conducted for beneficiaries of employment and wage support programmes. The updated regulatory plan includes a new mechanism with the Ministry of Labour to address cases of unlawful dismissal and maintain communication with beneficiaries of wage and employment support during and after the support period. To date, more than 32,400 beneficiaries have been contacted with findings showing that cases of unlawful dismissal comprise no more than 0.1% of those contacted. Additionally, 18 violations of individual programmes were recorded.